Now, as we were saying, Israel, when Yahweh says, I've called my son, Israel, right? This is concerning Israel out of Egypt. I've called my son Israel out of Egypt. It's his son. But it's also, Israel is also the corporate the corporate man, right? It's a corporate man, but what kind of man? Well, true, Israel is the black man, the real black man. Not every black man. Israel is the corporate man, and we was comparing it to the corporations. Corporations today are considered to be an individual. In other words, companies and corporations so they have many people working in it. They are considered before the law to be a person. So Israel, who we are, you understand, is the son that was called out of Egypt and is the corporate man or the true. Let us signify this. You understand, when we talk about real Israel, the real spiritual Israel of God, we are talking of the true black man. Now, of course, some would say, well, what about spiritual Israel? Speaking of the Gentiles, you understand? Do they have any part, those who are not ethnically black? Well, of course they do. That should be clear and obvious. And there is a standard, you understand, that Yahweh says for those who are not of the seed or the zar that they have to uphold. And we've touched on this previously and elsewhere. So there is the spiritual Israel, you understand, of different nations, of different ethnicities, but there's a standard for them. And that standard is not set by I and I individually, but that standard has been set by the God and the Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Moshiach, Yehoshua, or Yeshua, if you please. Gietachin Jesus Christo. So this is important to understand at the outset when we speak about Israel. Israel being that son. Israel being that corporate man. Israel being the true black man. Now this does not mean that every black man, because they are black, is our brother. I know some of y'all are fanatics. Some of y'all are Peter Tosh fanatics. And we was going to touch on this particular video, perhaps at another time. You might know this video, um, Red uh, Razor Red X, Stepping Razor Red X, this particular video. This is one of the saddest videos, I'll be honest with you, that I've ever seen, this particular video. I think, I think they have it online or Google or maybe it's now on the YouTube somewhere and you can check it out for yourself. This is really a sad, I, I pray for our brother's soul, you understand, speaking of our brother Peter Tosh and many other Rastas who have abbreviated their glory, who, who did not really receive the teachings of his majesty as they should have. I know many of y'all will say, well, he was a real one, and you like Peter Tosh because of his, because of his talking about white man and talking about because of his, his um, he's like Saul in a sense. But you'll reject David. And Bar Mali, Baranasalasi, in other words, was more like David. But we're not going to go into that at this present time. We just make a brief reference, since it was on our mind when we're talking about the whole black man point, and some people say that, well, if you're a black man, then you're African. Well, perhaps you are. But just because you're a black man does not mean that you are Beta Israel. You might be a lost sheep black man who still have not recognized the truth. So that means you are living a lie. And you are living in the image of the beast, in the image spiritually, in the image psychologically, and in the image even physically until some so-called Negroes or bywords actually, they don't talk about wanting to be white, but it becomes overtly obvious to anyone who has 
a spiritual eye, much less a physical eye, to see the reality. And, and this is the state of affairs as we begin off these ten days of awe, known as the Yamim Norayim, the ten days of awe, where the righteous are inscribed in the book of life, Lachayim, for life, where those of the middle region, those in between, those on the fence, those double-minded, are given an opportunity and a respite during these ten days leading up to the Yom Kippurim, the Day of Atonement, to repent and to become righteous. And the Hadith Kidan, the New Testament, gives us the standard of Yahweh's righteousness in Moshiach, in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. Now, that being said, let us touch on this matter of Shoshanim. Now, Shoshanim, let us put this up here. Shoshanim, we'll begin off over here so we have a little more room. Shoshan. Neem means lilies, right? Lilies. Lilies. Is that two L? Lilies? It means actually one L. It means lilies, right? Lilies. But lilies also means trumpets. Lily also refers to trumpets. So Shoshanim refers to lilies. And Shoshanim also refers to trumpet. And this also, too, can be understood in the mishtir or in the wisdom that our brother and lawgiver Moshe, Musa, was learned in and was mighty in word and in deed. Now, why that's important? Because it's a reminder of redemption out of bondage, even out of spiritual bondage, even out of Willie Lynchism, even out of the isms and schisms, the mix up moods and attitudes to those who receive. You understand? Know to those who make their wills obedient to good influences. And this is where there is a beautiful, for lack of a better word, democracy a spiritual democracy where ones have a choice. Even Moshe said, choose you this day whom you will serve. I put before you two ways. Choose you this day. So each one has a choice, as we had demonstrated in the previous, in the previous um, um, writing up here on the dry erase board, we showed the Sadiqan, the righteous. We showed, secondly, those of the middle region, the middle class, those who still are on the fence, indecisive, double-minded, hedging their bets, and those of the so-called lower spiritual class or the wicked, you understand, know the wicked who are to be blotted out at the after this 10 days of respite, spiritually speaking, see, spiritually speaking, judgment is already going on, but the Almighty still is merciful and gracious. His mercy endure forever. That's not just a saying. That's a reality. Those of us who admit that as true is admitting and bearing witness to that reality and reminding those who have not accepted the truth of that truth and reminding them they still have a time to choose. And choose life is what Moshe even said, Moses. He said, choose life. Because if you don't choose life, then you get death. And then when we look at Revelation, it speaks about the spiritual or the second death. The second death. So there is, after the so-called death of the body, there is the potential of another death. This, is, this, this must be understood. You see, unfortunately, many of those who have already gone to the spirit, the spirit world have encountered this reality. And it's not as the Nicolaitanes and the make-believers and the liars and deceivers have made them to believe. 
it is much more serious than that and much more realer than that. But here's the key. The key is this love letter. We can call it love letter instruction, this manual of righteousness and salvation known as the B-I-B-L-E. So, with that being said about Shoshanim, which is referring to trumpets, this is the key thing that we wanted to bring forward, that the Shoshanim is referring to trumpets. Now, the particular psalm, Psalm 69, and we touched on verse 28, where it speaks about the wicked being blotted out of the, out of the book of the living, it says, let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. So let them be blotted out of the book of the living of life and not be inscribed or not be written with the tzadikon or the righteous. Thus, this particular mezmur, this witness, this psalm is a perfect psalm for this particular Season. As we said from the earlier part of this Rosh Hashanah series, we have made it known that there are penitential, penitential, or penitential, penitential psalms that are that are to be read, that are to be said, that are to be meditated upon during these ten days, and from the scriptures we have the Messianic Psalms. And Psalm 69 is a Messianic Psalm. Psalm 69. So please make note that this particular Psalm, this particular Psalm here is a, um, is a Messianic, where's our pointer, is a Messianic Psalm. This Psalm right here is a Messianic Psalm. Now, there's other psalms which are messianic psalms, and we hope to touch on them, but since this is a psalm in our view at the present, let us touch on this particular psalm right now. Now, before we get into the, the footnote down here, and the footnote is very important to um, refer to. First of all, the footnote from the Schofield, it says, the NT, or New Testament, Adis Kidan, quotations from, and reference to this psalm, Psalm 69, it indicates in what way it adumbrates Christ. It adumbrates Christ. It expresses and it, it speaks of, it speaks of, 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 of Christos. That word adumbrates, make a note of it. We'll look it up to just make sure we have a clear idea of it. But it goes on to say, it is the psalm of his humiliation and rejection, verses 4, 7, 8, and 10 to 12. Verses 14 to 20 may well describe the exercises of his holy soul, his caduceness in Gethsemane, in Gethsemane, according to Matthew XXVI or 26, verses 36 to 45. While verse 21 is a direct reference to the mezkel, to the cross, or to the wood. Matthew XXVII, or 27, verses 34 and 48, as well as Johannes or John XIX, or 19, verse 28. The imprecatory verses... Uh, Im imprecation is like to say a uh, 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 rigum, a uh, rigum, a uh, curse. The imprecatory verses, verses 22 to 28, are connected. And then it has Romans XI, Romans 11, verses 9 and 10, with the present. Yeah, you know, get this. It's, it's connected, they say, with the present judicial, judicial blindness of Israel, the judicial blindness of Israel. Now, this is key. We already said that Israel is the son. It's the, corp it's the corporate man. In the spiritual and truest sense, it's the true black man. But Israel, in the fallen sense, has a judicial blindness. They are blind to God's law. 
They are blind to the fact that Negroes and lost sheep experience what they are experienced now in the spiritual Egypt because of this blindness, because of this failure to make their wills obedient to good influence coupled with ignorance, error, and envy. Verse 25, having special reference to, they say Judas, but more correctly, we should say Askorotawi. Askorotawi or Iscariot. Iscariot. Because see, Judas is Yehuda, and Yehuda is positive. What was negative about Judas was Askorotawi. Askorotawi means the cities. Now, it's important that we now understand that this is what also captivates the lost sheep in this present time, is the big city life. It's the cities, or the shitties, as we call them. This is where the lost sheep are suffering and dying in the cities because they prefer the 30 pieces of silver and they betray our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua. Now, Acts chapter 1, verse 20. And this Askorotawi, or Iscariot, who is thus made typical. See, Judas is typical of his generation, of a careless generation. It's like when we are interpreting and reasoning on Ethiopia circa 1974-75, and we label that generation to be the careless generation, we can more correctly label them to be the Askrotawi or the Iscariot generation as well, whom Judas Iscariot is a typical or a type of example of such a generation. But it's not just the Ethiopians abroad but it's also the Beta Israel over here in the Americas and the Caribbean. Because remember, Amos 9 and 7 says, Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So we may look at the Ethiopians over there and how they betrayed and politically crucified Negus and Negez, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, because of what they did to the son, would they not do to the Father, even if the Father be as a perfect witness in word and deed to the testimony of the Son? No doubt they would, and no doubt they have done it. They have done it. Now, it says that Judas is, is a type of his generation which shared his guilt. The whole generation shared that guilt. So he might have been the one that received the 30 pieces of silver, but the whole generation, the careless ones, they went along with that. What did they say to Pontius Pilate? Even Pontius Pilate washed his hands, a Roman, a white boy. Even the white boy, the Roman says, I don't know. Because in the Roman way of thinking, the Roman saying that, <laughs> I don't find no fault with this man. And yet they say, he says, should I crucify your king? And what did that careless generation say? They said the same thing that the careless Ethiopian generation at home and abroad said. We have no king but Kaiser, but Caesar. We have no king but Caesar. And they even said, well, let, let, let his blood be on us and our children. Well, that blood has turned into fire, has turned into fire. Now, it says that, the, that C Psalm LXX. I, I. And LXXII is 72, which is the next in the order of the Messianic Psalm. So that's another Messianic Psalm. So we wanted to give this, this um, foundation so one can understand the application of this particular Psalm to Moshiach. Now what's interesting about this particular season that we call the Ethiopian New Year, the, the Luni Solar Soli Lunar, you understand, time of the fall festival season, is that this is the season as well in which Jesus Christos, the Moshiach, was born in, as well as his mother, Kedistin Gmarium. 
when you learn and know the truth. So it's so interesting, the connection to this particular season, because this is the season of the blowing of trumpets, which is an announcement of the ten days of awe, as well as the day of atonement. And then, Kazabukhallah, we have the ingathering, what's known as Sukkot, which is very important, especially in the church age and the fulfillment of the church age. Before we um, um, move on, and if we don't get to say it here, there's a, the ingathering. I want you to put down, if you can, write this down in your notes, um, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 27. Now, let's just go there really quick. Um, Isaiah chapter 27, which is connected with the trumpets, and it says right here in Isaiah chapter 27, let's begin from verse 12. It says, Israel is regathered, that the Lord's sheep who were scattered to the four corners of the world will be regathered by Yahweh, not by the United Nations, not by a pseudo-Zionist organization, and not discluding the true Beta Israel, the black sheep of the family. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall beat off the channel of the river to the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one. O ye children of Israel, shall be gathered one by one. So when we teach that, we need to each take an individual responsibility. See, a lot of folks are trying to make somebody else believe something, but each of us must take an individual responsibility, gathering one by one. Verse 13 of Isaiah chapter 27, And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet, that the great trumpet shall be blown. That what kind of trumpet shall be blown? The great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship Yahweh in the holy mount at Jerusalem. So, there is a day of a great trumpet blowing. Now, we can see that this is connected with the beginning of the fall festival season. And in this fall festival season, there is a great trumpet that is to be blown. And as we have featured it before, let us allow you to, um, to hear this great trumpet Let's see if we can bring this up. This great trumpet, which is to be blown. So please, listen to the sound of the shofar. Now, that last, the, the, the last trump sometimes is called that great where the shofar is blown exceedingly or very much longer. It's, it's a longer, a louder blowing of the trumpet. So each particular blowing of the trumpet, each particular, how can we say, um, expression of the ram's horn known as the shofar and even the burra meliket, even the silver trumpets, they have their particular 
significance. And this is, that's also a very interesting teaching. And all of this is contained in the Metaf Kedus. All of this is contained in the Bible. And there is practical wisdom. There is metaphysical wisdom as well to this. So this verse here in Isaiah that we wanted to point out, Isaiah chapter 27, verse 13, is very significant because it says, In that day, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria. Now, in order to understand this in this present day and time, we must understand that the Bible is a spiritual book. And a lot of people, they misunderstand it because they are material Christians or they are material Jews. They are looking at everything from this a material or a physical level. The physical is important, but the physical becomes a foundation for the metaphysical. And the first things are physical or man's best. And the things that come afterward are Yahweh's blessed. So we need to understand that particular principle right there. But many are still stuck on the material or the physical level. So when they look at this here, they see Assyria, and they say, well, we're not in Assyria, but they're not understanding what Assyria means spiritually according to the prophets. And we must remember that the Moshiach spoke through the prophets, and it is our Ethiopic creed as um, messianic or Christian that shows us that it's Christ who spoke through the prophets. And we know that when Christ spoke to the disciples, he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Do you remember that? And when the disciples went to the feast, they did not eat. And they came back hungry and looking all gone and all hungry belly, wanga gut, yummy, yummy, and licky, licky. Because they didn't eat when they went to the feast. And they said, and Christ said, what happened? They said, we didn't eat. And Christ said, well, why didn't you eat? And they said, well, we didn't eat because you said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. They said, how be it you did not understand this spiritually or metaphysically? So how be it many still would read this and study this and not seek to understand this metaphysically or spiritually when it is Christos, the Moshiach, even Christ in his kingly character who spoke through the prophets. This is why in the Hebrew it says, Adonai Yah, Adonijah, Adonai Yahweh, Adoniyah, or the Lord God. You understand? And when you understand the different divine names, you can see the name of sonship of God as the Son speaking, distinguished from God as the Father speaking. And this is not a New Testament thing, as some would say. Because we find in um, Proverbs, let's touch on Proverbs for a moment, the words of Agor in chapter 30 of Metzhafe Misale, which says, The words of Agor, the son of Jacket, even the prophecy, the man spake to Ithiel, even to Ithiel and Ukal. Surely, I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the Kedus, the Holy, who hath ascended up into heaven, the Shammai, Shammayim, the Samai, the Samayat, or descended, who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Every word of Ha Elohim, Baruchu, of God, if you please, is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust, their imminent, their faith, their, their confidence in the positive sense, or one can say belief, but moreover their trust is a better word, in him. Now, 
one thing that's interesting about this, it mentions the father and the son. And remember, he said, I've called my son, I've called Israel, my son, out of Egypt. So when some, whether it's certain Jews or even some of the Mohammedans, when they reject the sonship, you understand, of the Moshiach, they are rejecting the very wellspring and the very righteousness of their lives in this world and in the world to come. And scripturally speaking, according to the testimony, according to the evidence, they are without excuse. Now, what's also interesting about the questions that Agur asks in verse 4, where he says, what is his name and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? You notice how a lot of these, these um, so-called, um, I call them material Christians or nominal Christians, Christians in name, they will talk about, yes, I believe in God, but they won't name his name. God of the Bible has a name. Even if you do not know the correct pronunciation, you should know that according to the translation, it is Jehovah. Or more correctly, Yahweh. Or some say Yahweh, so be it. And his son's name is Jesus or Yeshua, or Jesus. Now, remember when Moses was told to say to the Israelites that the God of the Hebrews, you know what I'm saying? Tell them that the God of the Hebrews, and Moses, being an initiate and understanding, you know, like, I often say this to people that sometimes some of y'all may have questions you want to ask or, or things you want to know, but you don't ask the right questions. Therefore, if you don't ask the right questions, guess what? You won't get the right answers. You won't get the right answers. And this is, this is, this is very, very important to understand. This is why when um, Agor says, what is his name? Don't just tell me that, oh, it's God. We all believe in the same God. If you come and tell me we all believe in the same God, you know what I'm going to ask you? What is his name? If you say we all believe in the same Lord, I'm going to ask you, what is his name? Did you ever see the South Park episode where it was some Christmas episode and they were putting on some play or something like that? And they were talking about the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, God, the Lord, the Lord, God. And, and, and the kids from South Park were believing that the Lord they was talking about was like the Lord and the God of, of, of you know, the Bible. They thought they were talking about the, the good Lord. You understand? The Tobiah. You understand? And then it came down that all that they was doing was for Satan. In other words, that as they got to the fulfillment of their, their putting together this Christmas play, because they just were saying, Lord, Lord, God, God, but they were never saying his name. And this is very, very interesting, and you find this in some of the politics too nowadays, where one can say, um, God bless you, God bless America, but they never tell you which God. Which God bless America? Now, some would say, well, it's all the same God. Really? The Bible even tells you that our God, our Father, is a God of gods. He is a God of gods. And the Bible also tells you there are gods that did not make heaven and earth. Therefore, implying there are gods which made or were co-creators, co in that process, this is why the first word in the Hebrew Bible concerning God is Elohim. And please don't get that word twisted. This word is a generic word. You know, it's like saying man or men or people. You know what I'm saying? I like people. It, what, what people? Every people? All people? You understand? Know but we're speaking of a particular people. We're speaking of a particular God. We're speaking of the true God. There is only one true God and Father of our one true Master and Medicine or Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Please, my brothers and sisters and others who are interested, do not get this twisted. Please don't get this twisted. And if you don't want to accept this, just go look at that South Park episode. I forget what it's called or whatnot. It's a Christmas episode. It is very interesting because when I watched it, I said, look at this. They know this. In other words, the kids from South Park were being tricked because they assumed that when they were talking about the Lord, the Lord, they assumed that it was talking about Jesus Christ and the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But then they learned at the end that they were horribly deceived, diseased. They were made to be like Eve. They were made to believe, be like Eve, a uh, L-I-E, a lie. And I and I suspect that the same will be true in this judgment time. And the same will be true at this present time. You know that many are believing that when people talk about God, and, and God bless you, you know, um, which God are you talking about? Which God are, are you saying, bless me? It's like when some of the people say, well, we all worship the same God. <laughs> How do you know? Do we all really worship the same God? That means we should all be reading the same scripture. You understand? Know and that means that we should be sharing things spiritually or religiously in common. But that's just part of that lie right there. And the word to the wise should be sufficient. The Holy Spirit thought it was necessary to reveal this to me at this time, to share this with you all. So please um, make a note of it and um, search it out for yourself. You understand? Find the truth in it for yourself. Prove it for yourself. That's the only way you will know it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it, but go study it. Go look it up for yourself. Study and show yourself approved. Take personal spiritual responsibility for your life in this world, in this world, and in the world to come. Because if you don't take that personal responsibility, then for yourself, who will? Your preacher, your pastor, your priest? Hmm. If you want to believe that, so be it. But I and I prefer to know the truth and be free of the lies and deceptions that humanity has been under for at least 6,000 years. Now, now that we've touched on a couple of these points, let us get into this psalm for the Rosh Hashanah, for the, for the uh, uh, Zikoron uh, uh, Teruah, for the Yom uh, Teruah, for the Day of Trumpet, which is the first day and beginning these ten days of awe leading to the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. Besma'ab, world, where manifest the Kedus, Ahadu Amlak, Ahadu Amlak, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, or Yahweh, thy God, thy Eloh, Elo, is one Yahweh, Yahweh Ahad. Besma'ab, in the name of the Father, where 